Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This week we're gonna paint a self-portrait and we're gonna get into some self-reflection, I think. Please like, share and subscribe. Bye. Hi guys, welcome back. This week we're gonna paint in oil on illustration board. This is gonna be a self-portrait. It's always an opportunity to reflect on uh, ourselves on the way we see ourselves, so on the way we perceive ourselves and about our personal stories. When I decided to paint this uh, image that was actually just a selfie taken my, with my phone here at the cabin, I thought that I wanted to go back to something more basic. So I wanted to go back to a, a reduced palette of four colors but I felt like I didn't want to go back to the Zorn palette and instead I wanted to explore a couple of pigments that I've introduced recently and I did paint a little bit with them and wanted to get to know them a little bit better so my palette this week was a Lizarin Crimson which I've been loving I've used it for the portrait of my mom weeks ago and it's a cool red that goes towards the purple side. So this was my red and uh, as a yellow I decided to use raw sienna which is a earthy color and it's a very shy type of personality which is basically the opposite of a Lizarin Crimson. A Lizarin Crimson is very saturated, very strong. Rosiana instead is very subtle. I knew right away that my painting was gonna, was gonna get on the cooler side with this choice. And, uh, and I was okay with that because the original picture was uh, taken in front of the window and that's why I have the reflection of the shadow on my face that I found really interesting and moving uh, because it was really describing the shape and the three-dimensional uh, form of my face and that that was really what I was attracted to at first. This light that was coming from the windows was pretty cold it was an overcast day with some sun so it was a white kind of light situation and because i've been living in a cabin the last uh, few months with my family up in the mountains all my shadows are very warm because they reflect all the wood that surround us and i found that for that effect earthy tones with the lizard crimson gives me that feeling that I have of the shadows at the cabin. At the same time, I also wanted, of course, a dark uh, pigment because I was not going to use ivory black. And I decided to experiment a little bit more with raw amber. Now, raw amber is a, it's a new friend for me because I've always used burnt amber instead. And burn amber is a very warm, deep uh, color. And I thought the raw amber was pretty close to burn amber, but instead, no. Raw amber has more of a cool tint to it. And I discovered pretty quickly, as soon as I mix it with titanium white, that it was veering toward the green. So then when I realized that, I was happy that I did have a lizarding crimson on my palette because... I was able to play the green against the red. Those complementaries usually balance the picture pretty well. As far as my drawing, as usual, I went with a pretty detailed and structured drawing. I did went and built a very solid shape, three-dimensional shape for my drawing. And I used a red pencil originally, my illustration board prepared with gesso. And then because I had some scribbles of my daughter underneath in red and blue, I was, I was having a really hard time to figure out my shape. And I really wanted to have it clear before starting to paint because at this point of my development, I 
um, my drawing underneath is uh, is almost like an anchor for me and I am aware of this in my process and I know that slowly I'll have to uh, to work drawing into my painting process instead of having it as a map underneath but right now I still feel that this is part of who I am as an artist and I'm gonna honor it so uh, instead of just going recklessly and paint on top of um, not very well proportioned drawing I decided to apply the dark background on the left side and rework my drawing with a white pencil on top and, uh, and I think that really helped and uh, I was happy with that uh, drawing with a white pencil and at that point I started to cover my, my painting. Now I want to say something, usually I paint when my daughter takes her nap every day but um this week I was uh, I was lucky enough that my that my husband spent the whole morning with uh, Sophie so I had the whole morning on Saturday and then her nap so I had four or five solid hours and I was able to paint to draw and paint this in one day in one, sit in one sitting so it was a four hours painting and I think that was very important on a self-portrait and it, it gave me more time to reflect on what on what I was doing. I found myself wanting to keep the eyes not properly aligned because I thought that was gonna give more character to my portrait. And that kind of uh, happened with the metamorphosis painting uh, of Ryan a few weeks ago where the eyes was one in light and one in shadow and I really like that effect because as an artist I have a very um, creative side of me and I'm a little bit of a dark shadow but at the same time I'm also a very highly rational person and I think that these two sides of me often they clash together because uh, the rational side wants to make sense of the reality around me and then uh, oftentimes uh, just the rules outside they just don't apply to what I expect and uh, and sometimes that side is so cool and and, and methodical that uh, just uh, derails my personality I think a little bit the creative side inside the shadows is um, is the artist that wants to es express, be es expressive and that uh, is always uh, tormented by the idea of time passing by, getting older and a little bit split and dissociated and not very, not completely one as one could imagine when thinking about the self. The self is, is, uh, is, is a puzzle of many different pieces that connect together somehow, uh, and, but, but somehow also never touch each other ever. So I think this was a reflection on the fact that this is also the way for now I approach my paintings as well, as I've mentioned many times before. And um, through this process of making these weekly videos, I am getting more aware of the way I work. And I think that talking about it is actually very, very helpful to, to figure out things the way they are. It's very abstract and it's difficult to explain. So I think that sharp division uh, between light and shadows and the reduced palette helped me to express this about me so while i was painting this i realized that the coolness of uh, of raw amber that was uh, going towards the green and the uh, just a position of uh, this uh, lizard crimson made me think about edward monk but also the way i mm, decided to push an elongated face to highlight the shadow of the jaw, to show the, the structure of the skull underneath. It really was a way for me to get in touch with the fear of 
time passing by and getting old. And I think this uh, this concept of femininity um, interlinked with the idea of death is very strong in Edward Munch's work. And especially in the Madonna, but in other paintings as well, where a lot of um, feminine um, figures are represented almost uh, with a touch of a little bit of a ghostly look. Even if they are young figures, there are, and it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a symbol of the expressionism and of that uh, period of time. I mean, I, we could think about uh, Clint as well. Oftentimes, the, the figure of, of, of the mother is charged with, uh, with also the symbol of uh, motherhood and, and time passing, but also this uh, incredible chain of generation, right? That, that find a point, a contact point in the, in the image of, of the mother. Present link of an infinite chain that links together lots of families, that are not there anymore and the families that will be here and, and this is the it's what really it's the history of humanity i think so yeah thank you so much for watching my videos every week i really i really am happy uh, if uh, somebody listens to my to my bubbles and make sense out of it and maybe maybe someone can connect to what i say and uh, and that would be great so if you do just leave a comment and we can chat a little bit um so definitely a more psychological week something a little bit um, more psychoanalytical and um yeah, I really enjoyed painting this one. I think that uh, I did learn a bunch and I am learning week after week. So I'm very happy about this. And this is the, the, the focus of my project. And this is the reason why I've decided to record this video weekly for a year. Because this is a journey. This is a path. And, um, and maybe it's not going to... Is not going to bring me anywhere. I am not looking for a final destination at all. But just to reflect on, to, on who I am as an artist as, and as a person. And, uh, you know, share it. I think sharing is, is important because it pushes you farther in order to explain an, an imaginary other person that may be or not out there listening. Just the act of trying to explain, it really brings a new level of consciousness to what I'm doing as an artist and um, as a person. So have a great Sunday. Uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.